Hello, today we're going to talk about atmospheric air pressure. Now, when we start to think about our atmosphere, um, when we go and look at it, we just want to understand some basic patterns that we see. And if you've ever thought about it, or perhaps when you've been on an airplane, or if you've had an opportunity to go up into the mountains, um, you might notice that air pressure starts to change. Some people, um, have noticed this just through very simple things. Let's say we're on a car ride um, and maybe we've, or we've come into Denver, Colorado, and we decide to go on a trip up into the mountains. We're right at Denver. We're still pretty high in elevation, but we wanna go up into the mountains. But before we go, we gotta get some snacks. So we're going to buy some potato chips or something um, at the store. So these were sealed at a factory. Um, and they look fine. They look like a normal bag of chips. But when we drive up into the mountains, uh, the pressure is lower up in the mountains, but the amount of air inside of our bag has stayed the same. And what you'll start to notice is that the air molecules are trying to expand um, inside of that bag and they're taking up more space. So the bag becomes puffy when we go up um, because it's, um, the air molecules inside it are expanding outwards. Um, when you finally open it, the pressure is going to equilibrate, but that's just one way you can see the changes um, in air pressure. So something you might've noticed. Um, some people notice it, um, same thing on an airplane. If you go up in and you open a can of chips or something that you purchased at the airport, when you're really high up um, in the atmosphere inside the plane and you open it, even though the plane is pressurized, it's not exactly the same that it was um, before you took off. So you might notice that um, just as one way to see air pressure. Okay, so long story short, what is the pattern that we start to see? So I've just drawn a simple graph up here. We're going to have pressure on the bottom. And this is just our air pressure. And we're gonna be measuring it in millibars. And it's gonna increase from left to right. And so just for some values, we can put 200, 400, 600, 800, I'm gonna extend a little more, and 1,000, okay? And we're going to go up in altitude. So our distance up, um, you can think about it if you're on land, you can be going up in elevation, but at some point we're gonna go up into the air above our uh, mountains. Um, so we're just looking at altitude and that's going to be in kilometers. And it's also increasing as we go from the bottom to the top. And we'll just put these in increments. So four, um, eight, six, 12 will be the next one. Okay, uh, we can just keep going a little higher, 28 and 32. Okay, so we'll have our graph. So we've gone up um, in altitude and air pressure. So when we start down at sea level, um, the air pressure is really high and it's going to increase like that, okay? More or less like that. What we find is that the fastest rate of change is down here at the bottom. So those increases, that's where we notice the change in pressure. Um, that's happening within about the first um, eight kilometers above the surface. And the change, we see a decrease of 10 millibars for every 100 meters, okay? All right, so what are we talking about? Why do we really care? So this is just something that's happening. When we start to try to look at um, what's happening on the surface of the earth, especially when we're trying to talk about changes with wind, it is related to changes in air pressure. Um, but because we see this change, we do have to adjust um, the measurements that we make. So, um, you know, if you have a location that is on a mountain and it's pretty high up, um, you'll need to adjust it with this rate of change down to sea level. So when you look um, on your weather maps and you see the, the millibars for the air pressure, that's been all adjusted down to what we call sea level pressure.
and this is just um, the air pressure that's adjusted to sea level so that you can compare site to site. Okay, um, so let's see, what do we want to do? Um, yeah, this is the adjusted sea level, and that's we can do our comparisons. And then the last thing, if you're just needing to remember, we use barometers. to measure our air pressure. So sometimes they call it the barometric pressure. So just a couple things to think about um, when you're thinking about changes related to air pressure in the atmosphere.